Hi there, Blaze here and in today's tutorial I'm gonna show you how to create height map in the Godot and how to export it to the PNG file. So at the end of this video you should get results similar to this what you can see on the screen right now. I think this should be useful if you want to implement procedural generation to your game. If you want to generate some caves or terrain in 2D or 3D games, doesn't matter. Also exporting this file to PNG can be useful too because you will be able to see how it looks. Okay. Okay, so let's start with creating new node to the scene and let's call it hitmap generator and let's assign script to this and let's create this. This doesn't need to be a node to this script. This can be also an object based script that you will call from another node. But to keep this tutorial simple, I will implement this as a node to D and I will write the code relating to the ready function. So the code will be called just when you hit the play button. So let's remove the process function and let's start with variable. Let's call it height noise. And the type of this variable will be fast noise. Now we need a variable where we will store our hit map let's call it hit map and the type of this could be just an array but because we will have many data inside this variable because i want to create image of size 4096 per 4096 so i will get about 60 million pixels and this would use a lot of space so better option than array would be a packed float 64 array you can also use packed byte array but i think using float64 is easier in this case, so let's go with it. I will split this code into the functions so I can show you the different stages of the generation. Let's start with init noise and I need to specify the function for this. Here I will just initialize my noise. So to the height noise, we need to assign fast noise little dot new. Then we need to specify the seed for this noise and I will use randi. This will generate a random integer value. And there are some options that could be useful for you. Noise type. You can select cellular noise, parallel noise, simplex, simplex smooth, value or value cubic. You can read the differences between them on the Godot website. At the end, you need to check these types to know which you want to use. But for generating terrain, for example, and the Perlin noise is the most popular. And you can also simply not write this line because Perlin is the default noise. But I will leave this here so you can see how this works. Then we have a height noise frequency. And this is really important property because you will need to specify the frequency of the noise. And as you can see, the default is 0.01. And if you write here the greater number than this 0.01, your noise will have more points, more artifacts. But if you want your word to have uh, less points, you need to write a lower value. For my game, I use 0.003. So this is the most important things. The second stage is generate heat map. And I need to write a function for this. And this is a little tricky because if you don't want to store your heat map in the array, you can just access it with uh, a function to the head noise. And this function is called get noise and you can get a noise in one dimension, two dimension or three dimension. I will get a two dimensional noise because I want to put it as a PNG image. So I will go with 2D. And if you specify the X and Y value, you will get the noise between minus one and one. And this is, this is your, and this is a point of your heat map. But because I want to put it into the file and because I want to have the entire map in one variable, I need to put this noise points somewhere so i will put them into the heat map but if you generate your word and you don't want to store it you can just use this simple line and get a noise in this way and the variable value will be a float type but let's assume i want to save this to the png and i want to have this in this ri so we need to call this hate noise and we need to store it inside this ri for every point of our image and because i want to create image of 4k per 4k I I want to use two for loops and I will start with Y axis and next is for the X axis and for every point I need to get the value of type float with this height noise here I will use X and Y. Now this value can be appended to the head map packet float array so I just need to write height map point append and I need to push the value and that's it we have head map in our array fully generated and the last thing I want to see these results so I want to save this map to the file so I will create the function save to file 
and to save this as a PNG I need to use the image class so I need a variable image of type image I can write this this way this is the same as this but as you can see the second line is simpler so I don't need to write the image twice and in this image I need to call the function create and create image with the 4096 per 4096 dimension then use mip maps we can set to false and the format of this image will be image that format RGB8 if you want to specify the alpha channel you can go with RGB8 but I don't need it because I want to create simple head map in the grayscale now we need to have a buffer this buffer is type of packet byte array and the size of this buffer could be set to 4096 multiplied by 4096 multiplied by 3 because we have three values for rgb and for rgba you need to set the 4 here now to the buffer we need to assign image that get data and for this buffer we need to get the value from our heat map so we need to use two for loops here again and to get the grayscale value between 0 and 255 we will use a grayscale variable and here we need to assign the int of the calculation we will do here and the calculation is head map and to specify the position of this head map we need to multiply y-axis by 4096 because this is the width of our image if our image will instead be 4096 in half but 2048 in y-axis you will need to write 2048 here okay so this is the maximum x so this is the width of the image not the half the width and now we need to add x for this and right behind this bracket you need to add one this is because the have map is generated between minus one and one and you just need to move this between zero and two and now all these calculations you can multiply by 127.5 okay so now i want to append the value to the buffer and we need to append the grayscale value and we need to do this three times because first we'll go to the red data second is for the green data and the last one is for the blue data if you will omit these two lines you will get a gradient of the red color if you will mix this you will have some other colors for some types of map i use for example fully red or fully blue color but the standard head map is in the grayscale so to have it in the grayscale you need to append the same value three times okay so let's go back from this for loop and at the end you need to call the image set data now you need to specify the width and half of the image write false to use mip map image is of course of the format rgb8 and the last parameter is our buffer at the end go with image save png and let's save this to the resource folder because this will generate this heat map right here and let's call it heat map that png you can of course use other paths for example user path any you want okay but let's go with this now we need to save this let's save this scene as head map generator and let's start this project select current scene as the default now the project started you need to give it few seconds because this heat map needs a while to generate image if you will have lower image this will be of course faster okay so now let's open this folder in file manager this is our project and this is our heat map let's open it and as you can see you have a heat map generated okay so that's all for today I hope you will be able to create your own heat map right after watching this video. If you have any questions, write them in the comment section. I really try to respond to all of them, so don't be shy if you have any questions, write them. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to more Godot tutorials, and see you soon in another video. Bye!